Hi, my name is Vincent Versace. I'm Nikon Ambassador, and I am here at Picture Line in Salt Lake City to talk about a new product that just came out this week, the Nikon ES2 Film Digitizer. And the goal of this video and tutorial is to discuss what are best practices on how to use the ES2, um, what you need, what lens you should use with, how to work with it, and how to create a raw file from a negative and how to convert it to a positive. So this technique is going to show you how to use a camera ranging anywhere from the 5000 all the way up to the D5, as well as the D850, which is what this device was currently designed for. Let's look at the supplies required for working with the negative. What I have is I use the Ilford anti-static cloth, a static whisk brush, lens cleanse by Hoodman, the PEC pads, and the PEC 12 solution. This is to clean the lens to make sure that the back element is completely clean and, and front element. I'll show you how to properly clean a lens. This is to clean the negative and this is to make sure that you brush the static off and you want to have a clean cloth designed for working with negatives to be able to place the negative on. Now, the ES2 film digitizer works with two lenses. Uh, the first being the, if you're going to go full frame, the 60 millimeter nano coated lens and if you're going to go DX it would be the 40 millimeter. Now the reason for this is that these lenses are designed specifically to work with this device. The 105 macro micro Nikkor is a wonderful piece of glass. I own it, makes beautiful pictures. However, it has to do with the focus distance of that lens. This is the optimum set of lenses depending on if you're DX or FX to be able to work with this device. Now let's unbox the ES2 film digitizer. Dun 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 This is the user's manual. Let's take a quick look at this to see what it is that we get. What you're going to get in this is the device that you put the slides or film in, the extender rings depending on which lens you're using, and the carriers for film and for slide. Now this works with the two lenses of two current lenses on the market. This is the DX, the FX, and it also has an adapter if you have the older 60 millimeter. So the way this works is if you're using the DX, this gadget attaches straight to the lens. If you're using the 60 for full frame, then the thinner, narrower gadget screws on to the lens, the adapter. And if you're using the older 60 millimeter, then the longer adapter is what you need. So now let's see what these all look like. This is the adapter for um, the FX size, the 60 millimeter. This is for the older 60 millimeter. Put that over here. There's nothing like that new camera smell. This is the ES2 film digitizer adapter. So if you have the DX lens, you just screw this straight on. If you have the 60 millimeter, newer 60 millimeter, this one. And if you have the older 60 millimeter, this one. This. Put that over here. Is the slide digitizer. And this, which is what we're going to work with today, This is the film carrier. So these are the things that come in the box. And this is everything that you need, include, need the lenses, to be able to produce a negative or a transparency copy of all your films. Now I want to put this into perspective for you. I shot over 6,000 rolls of film a year at 36 exposure a roll of film for over 20 years before I switched to 100% digital. I spend about $200 a month just storing old negatives. I cannot wait to be able to digitize those negatives into a raw file that I can then use to do all sorts of wonderful things in the computer. So with that, let's take a look at how to set the camera up with the ES2 film digitizer. Let's take a look at how you start to shoot a negative with the ES2 film digitizer. 
I think I have too much fun saying that. All right. I'm a big believer of always getting it right in the camera. Now, one of the big issues is schmutz on a negative, which we're going to talk about in a second. But if you have schmutz on the back element of the lens, that means that every negative that you shoot, regardless of how clean it may be, will have the same problems built in, baked in to that negative. So you want to start with everything being clean. The way I look at it is I always want to be the weakest link in anything that I do photographically. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Hoodman Lens Cleanse system, which is what I recommend using to clean my lens. Let me show you how you properly clean a lens. This is a two-part system. It uses an enzymatic cleaner that does not harm in any way, shape, or form the multi-coating, and then has a cloth designed specifically to um, wipe off whatever stuff and fluids are left. So this is the dry cloth, and this is the moist cloth. Let's put the dry cloth down here. And what I'm going to do is open this up. Make sure your hands are clean when you do this. And the proper way to clean a lens is not to wipe it like this, but to go in a circle and then bring everything down to the edge. Let me do that again, right there, see? Let's put this here. And then what I'm going to do is the same thing with that. You see how I wipe this to the edge. We're going to do the very same thing to the front element. So what we have is a lens that is completely free of schmutz. Take that off. Put that on. So now this lens is good to go. Now you see how I don't have any glass here, no filter, because I want to have absolutely nothing in front of the lens you're only as good as the first piece of glass. And I don't need any glass in front of me to take a picture. So what I'm going to get is the best possible image because I'm not putting anything in front of the lens. I don't need a polarizer, don't need a UV. This is gonna be straight through the lens without any of that type of correction. Since I'm using the newer version of the 60 millimeter lens, the nano-coated 60 millimeter micro Nikkor, I'm going to use this adapter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to screw this Whoops, good catch. I'm going to screw this onto the adapter, making sure that I don't cross thread it. That's in place. And now I'm going to screw this onto that. How about we screw it righty tighty, lefty loosey? All right, and I find that it is better to attach this first to that. So first thing that I do is I loosen this up depending on whether or not I'm gonna be shooting uh, negative, which we're gonna do for this exercise, or chrome or slides. What this is, is this gadget here moves and it allows you to be able to um, finely adjust for if you have cardboard, you can zoom in or zoom out, versus negative, which has no cardboard, so you can bring it so that it completely fills the frame. So this is for composition. And once you get that set, then lock it down. It also makes it so that you can even it out so that everything is flush and that's what this tool is for. But make sure that you unlock it before you slide it because you run the risk of scratching it. So let's look at all the steps that we have to go through to prep the negative, to get it ready so that we can put it in the carrier. We're gonna need the following things. A peck pad, piece of peck pad, an anti-static cloth, the anti-static brush, the PEC 12 solution, and of course, the negative. Now, it does not matter how well you store your negatives. The longer you store them, the more stuff seems to be attracted to them. It's, it's one of those laws, like um, falling cameras, are attracted to the sharpest rocks and that which it is you need the most 
is always that which you leave in the studio and you only realize that until you're at the location. Same thing here. The longer the negative sits in storage, the more stuff is attracted to the negative. So let's take a look at how to properly clean a negative. First, we take this out of the holder. Now you can use white lint-free gloves if you want. And there are two sides to the film. There is the base side and the emulsion side. And what we're gonna do, and the base side is always the shinier of the two, is we're gonna first run the static brush over. And what that does is that gets all of the looser, bigger boulders off. This is all about trying to minimize scratching the negative with schmutz that's on the negative. So a static brush, everything is attracted to it. Now we're going to apply film cleaner. And again, working on a lint-free chamois, which is what I'm working on, that guarantees it's a microfiber. And in this microfiber, what will occur is that I won't get any lint. I'm gonna do it on both sides. There we go. And lastly, the anti-static cloth. You see how I'm holding this by the edges? Now the lens, or the negative, is good to go. Let's pop this open. And we're gonna place this in here. And how I'm gonna do this, is you see these little black lines here? I'm going to line this up so that the black lines go right in between The, the negative, and what I should have is that. Now, let's load it into the device and let's shoot some negatives. Now let's talk about how we're gonna set it up for light source. Of course, you can use a strobe and you can hook that all in. You can also use window light, or in this case, I'm gonna use a loom cube. And I'm putting a diffuser on the loom cube. I have the highest level of diffusion that the loom cube kit comes with. Now the reason for the way we're gonna do this is I prefer to use a continuous light source instead of a strobing light source. And the reason for that is as I'm trying to make decisions about what I wanna do, the light source that I'm going to capture at is the light source that I'm using. So I'm not constantly strobing and I can't, don't have to do a lot of guesstimation. Now, one of the ways to check to see what the light pattern is of your light source is to turn it on and what I will then do is I will bring it down one stop. And as you can see up here, I've already preset this to one stop. And how you do that is you move this here. And so I'm one stop under for the test. Let's pull this up. There we go. So we can see it. And what I'm gonna do is turn this on. And now the Loom Cube has nine levels of light intensity. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's gonna give me the biggest field of light. And I'm gonna take a look at it here. And I'm gonna look at that and you can see it's underexposed, but I have no pattern and I have even light edge to edge. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, with that said, I'm now going to come back and bring this back to zero. Take another test. And I'm gonna show you something that happens. My white light looks gray. The reason why my white light looks gray is because meters meter to 18% gray. So if I take a picture of white diffusion or if I took a picture of black and I let the meter do it with this level of area being filled, the black picture would be 18% gray and the white picture would be 18% gray. All I'm looking for here is to see if the lighting pattern is equal. Once I put the slide in, I can then test to see 
if I need to open it up a stop or if it's exactly right. Now, with regards to setting white balance, it's important to white balance to the light source. This is D50, which means daylight, so it's 5000K. So what I'm going to do is set the camera up so that it's at daylight. If I'm shooting window light, again, that's D50, and I'm going to set it up for daylight. If I'm using incandescent light, which I wouldn't recommend, but if that's what you're using, I'd set that up for incandescent. If you're using a strobe, again, you set it up for daylight. So now let's talk about how you actually photograph a negative. Now let's keep in mind how a negative worked. The emulsion side was facing the lens, so when the light came through, it hit the emulsion side. The base was on the back. Now, the tendency is going to want to look at it and see it right side, every the way it's supposed to be, and shoot it that way. The problem is, if you do that, you're looking at the base, not the emulsion. And what you want to do is photograph the emulsion, not the base, which means that the image will be flipped when you take a picture of it. Now, solving this problem is simple. It's a simple fix in post-processing software. You just flip the uh, image and you're done. But you always want to face, be it a chrome slide or a negative, both color or black and white, the emulsion side facing the sensor, the base facing the light source. So we've determined that I want to use image 32 on this. And how I know it's the emulsion side is that when I look at it, all of the letters are backwards. So that says to me, emulsion side. Now I'm going to put this in here. And I want to do 32, which is here. And what's really nice about this is that each one of the frames click stops. So you just slide it in until it clicks. Now, I'm going to turn on live view, and what I'm going to get here is my negative. Now, let me adjust this in, and this is where this comes into play. I can move this this way or this way to get this evened out, and I can fill the frame, which in this case, Takes a little dance, but there you go. And perfect. So now what I have is I have the full frame. I'm using the full frame of the sensor, and that's what this adjustment's for, and I'm going to tighten this down which means that for everything that I'm going to use in this shoot, this is already done. So it's now locked down. So now it's time to focus the negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my autofocus cursor to a critical area. In this instance, the image is going to be a tree, and I'm just going to hit the button down, and it's going to focus. Now to get even more critical on the focus, what I can do is zoom in, and I can do it again, and this will give me the tightest, sharpest focus. Now, the minute I've done that, I'm going to turn off focus. And the reason why I do that is in case I want to do multiple variations in camera of this image. So let's go back to our normal size. I'm now in manual mode. Um, on the D850, now this is the first camera to have it, but on the D850, as you can see, I have focus peaking, and you see how sharp everything is based on that focus. All right, we've now focused the image. What we're now going to do is go into picture control. One of the profound misconceptions of picture control is that it's for JPEGs. It's a JPEG setting. You only use picture control for JPEGs. That's not true. Picture control was developed to work with the NEF file in Nikon's proprietary software capture NXD. Now this is true for all camera manufacturers that have their own software. For example, Canon has something called Image Styles and it's designed to work in their proprietary software. One of the things that you paid money for was all of the engineering and design that went inside the camera you bought. Um, when you use third-party applications, frequently you give up a lot of the benefits that are designed in the camera. One of them is picture control. 
So what we're going to do, what I've done, is I've built a picture control setting in picture control utility that I've loaded into my camera that allows me to shoot a negative and make it a positive and have it be a raw file. So let me show you how you load the picture control utilities that I've created for you using the picture control utility software. So after you've downloaded the folder that contains the picture control utilities, what you do is you click on this and you'll find the folder should be on the desktop and it's going to be called VVBW Neg PC Settings. Click on that. Click on all the ones that you want to load, which will be these three. Click open and there they are. And then you quit Picture Control Utility. What will now happen is when you launch Capture NXD, these Picture Control Utilities will automatically be loaded into the software. So let's launch Capture NXD and take a look. Now that we've launched Capture NXD, as you can see, what I have is a negative image. So let's take a look at picture control. And if you notice, I have three picture controls here, the ones that we loaded in picture control utility now show up in Capture NXD. So when I click on this, watch what happens. My negative now becomes a positive. What we're going to do next is we're going to show you how to load it into the camera so that it's even simpler, so that once you do this, you can open it up in here, and it will already be set for you. So next up, how to load a picture control into your camera. So how you load a picture control into your camera is first make sure that you have a card that is formatted to your camera, and then Click on the VVBW Neg PC Settings folder and select these three, which are the three picture controls that I've created, and drag them onto your card. Then simply dismount the card and put it in the camera. Next up, what you have to do in the camera to be able to load the picture controls from the card. So now that you've loaded the picture controls that we, I've created onto a flash card, your flash memory, put your card into the camera. Click on the menu button, then select the photo shooting menu. Click to the right on the thumb control. Scroll down till you get to manage picture control. Then again, click to the right. Then scroll down till you hit load save. Once again, click to the right. Click copy to camera. Click Invert BW Flat Neg. Click OK. Click to the right. Click OK. Now, repeat the same process again, except scroll down one. And then one more time, click down. Oops. There you go. Click OK. Now, let's take a look at our picture control. What we should have, when we click to the right, we scroll all the way down, past landscape, past flat, is we should have the three picture controls that I created. Now they're loaded into your camera, and when you're going to shoot a negative, select that, the appropriate one. That's really all it is to do. Simple as that. All right, so we have set the negative up, done all the negative prep that we're supposed to do, have that done. We've cleaned the lens to make sure that the lens is ready to go, put the lens on the camera, picked the right spacer for the lens that we're going to use. Um, we've selected our light source, in this case I'm using a loom cube, and most importantly we need to do is select the right white balance. For this it's D50, why? Because it's daylight. For strobe, you would select strobe. For incandescent light, you would select incandescent. If you're using window light, you would again select daylight. So you want to use, depending on the light source, it's important and imperative to make sure that you select the right white balance. The reason for that is you don't want to auto white balance your slide because let's say it's heavily green, that's going to change the way in which the camera interprets 
the image. You need to start with the light source that you're using. That's the most important. So now that we've done that, we've got this all lined up. We've adjusted everything here. We've then brought the image up on live view. We've focused it. And then in picture control, I selected the picture control standard invert black and white, which I'm going to give you. And the settings that I'm going to use for this are, are ISO 64. That's the lowest setting I can go. And the reason why I want to go there is that gives me the lowest amount of noise. I set it at f8. The reason why I set it at f8 is that's critical aperture for the lens. It means that what I'm going to get is the sharpest possible image because the light is most evenly distributed across the sensor plane. Once that's done, and once I've focused, what I do is take the picture. Now what we have is we have a raw file of a negative that has been inverted to a positive that we can then bring into the software to work with, our, our raw processor. In this case, the best possible software for this is Capture NXD. The reason for that is that Capture NXD recognizes picture control on a raw file. It's not just a JPEG setting, which is not what it was designed to be. If you want the best possible result, no matter whose camera you use, it will always be with the camera manufacturer software. They designed the sensor, they designed the camera, they designed the software to be able to read the information that they engineered. Everything else is reverse engineered to get close.